Okay, so uh, I'm Damian. Uh, Dave mentioned me a few times. I'm working with Dave mainly on the data plane part of the VPP. So I will quickly try to go through the multi-threading on the VPP. And as Dave already explained, uh, it's quite simple actually. Uh, we are using this embarrassing parallelism and basically creating the multiple worker threads in, and every worker thread is basically having the copy of the, gra uh, of the graph nodes. And when one packet selects one worker thread, it will always stay on it. So basically we are not trying to, to run different graph nodes on the different uh, CPUs. All, all threads are actually doing the same job. And uh, depending on the initial selection of the of the worker thread, the packet will stay on the thread up to the, on the tr transmit side. So VPP can be basically configured in four different uh, uh, threading modes. First and simple one is single thread. That is what we are running today in Vagrant image. So it's basically just a single VPP thread doing the, both the controller functionality like uh, CLI, API and, and the rest, and also forwarding packets. Uh, second one is multi-thread with worker thread only. In this setup, we basically are assigning different interfaces to different worker threads. And based on this selection, uh, and based on this selection, uh, that interface will pick up the, the packet from the input queue, from the re receive side on the, on the physical interface. It will, do, uh, it will process packet through the graph of nodes, and it will basically send the packets out on the transmit side. Uh, third possibility is something which is uh, which allows us to have one interface traffic coming from one interface spread to the multiple worker threads, and that is just in case when we are not able to use RSS. So basically, the the third case which we have is a kind of software software based RSS functionality. Uh, in that case, we have a IO threads, so called IO threads. Actually, there should be. Dave, there should be IO input threads, not IO threads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have worker threads. And, um, and uh, we can have multiple IO threads basically picking up packets from the received interfaces and then dispatching them to the different worker threads based on, on the hashing algorithm. And for, for uh, the last and let's say more specific uh, case or subversion of the third case is a case when we have the one, uh, when the main thread is not just doing CLI API stuff, but it is also doing the functionality of the IO thread and distributing traffic to the multiple worker threads. So basically, four different models. Most of the time in our testing, we are using the second one because, uh, I mean, we, we, the second one is actually the one which we can easily use with RSS because when you have RSS, you can basically have multiple receive queues and you can assign multi different receive queue to the different worker thread. Um, configuration of the multi-threading on VPP is quite simple. So uh, if you take a look into the slash etc slash VPP slash startup.conf, uh, you can, this is the startup configuration for VPP. And you can basically say either, uh, you can either do manual placement or, or auto placement, of course. On the left side, you can see the manual placement uh, example, where you basically see that we are assigning main, main, main thread to the, to the CPU core 1. Then we are assigning IO threads to core 3 and 19. And finally, we are assigning the, the worker threads to 4, 5, 20, and 21. This is a setup where we really want to say for every thread where it should really run on the, on the, on the server. If we want to, to leave decision of placing uh, different threads to the, to the VPP, we can do something like this, where we basically say skip core one. So basically, we want, typically we want to skip uh, uh, CPU zero on the server. So basically we are skipping one core and then we are assigning three workers, three workers to the to the first three available threads on the system. Uh, this is. So, if your 
You're using RSS here as well then. Yes. How do you assign the workers then to the different um, RSS queues, the different... I will come to that part. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will show it in the code how the, how the selection is done in the, on the receive side. Uh, there is a simple CLI, uh, basic debug, debug, sorry. Is the uh, auto placement uh, intelligent without hyperthreads? Uh, no, not hyperthreads. It basically just just takes the first available L core on the on the system okay. right now. But um, of course, I mean, if you really want, to, uh, typically the, the the second threads are are assigned to the higher uh, thread numbers. So basically, it will typically not happen that you will pick the two logical threads on the same CPU core. Uh, in, in the multi-core setup, there is show, show threads command, which basically gives you some idea where the VPP is running. So we have the, we have the in this case, we have a one main thread, we have four worker threads and two IO threads. So you have the lightweight process ID uh, of the each thread on this drawing. On this output, you have the L, L, system L core ID. You have the physical core number and physical socket number. So here you can basically see that we have a main thread and and two worker threads running on the on the CPU socket zero, and then we have two worker threads and two IO threads running on the CPU socket one. Okay. Uh, another part in the configuration which. You can uh, you need to take care of in the multi-core setup is basically assigning the the buffer memory. So we are NUMA aware. We are, we allow configuring the memory buffers on the on the NUMA node, and we basically VPP will pick up the the buffers uh, from the local lo local NUMA pool. So in this in this case there is a, something called in the configuration there is something called DPDK, and and curly bracket, and then inside you can basically specify the per NUMA node or per socket amount of memory. And this is basically the mapping to the DPDK configuration, which some of you are possibly uh, familiar with. Uh, <clears throat> another thing which we can mention is that it's sometimes it's convenient to, to run VPP on the, on the systems without the huge pages. And it's not a production setup, but for some testing, you can do that. And in that case, you just need to specify the no huge uh, command into, in, in the configuration file to basically avoid allocating the huge pages and using the, the normal memory. Of course, don't expect that uh, some physical NICs will work in that setup because, of the, because you, you cannot be sure that allocated memory is really continuous in the physical memory other space. Okay. So how that looks like on the code side. Yeah. Grab the mouse if you want it. Yeah. Okay, so here I have um, one two socket machine which have some NICs attached. My configuration is is this one. So in my setup, basically I'm assigning the main core to the, to the logical core one, and I have eight worker threads. So two to five and 18 to 21. Two to five are sitting on CPU socket zero, and 18 to 21 are sitting on socket one. Then I'm, I'm basically allocating two, on each socket one gig of memory, and here I am basically whitelisting the physical NICs on this system. Finally, there is I need to increase the, the number of MBUFFs because there is a lot of interfaces and I have RSS enabled which, uh, with value two, which means basically that for every interface I will create two receive queues on the on the on the each physical interface. So when I start VPP. show interface. You can see that I have several different interfaces uh, on this VPP um, <coughs> running. Uh, actually, 40 gig, uh, 40 gig uh, NICs are Intel Fortville. 
10 gig uh, NIC is Niantic 10 gig. And this first one is actually something new from Intel, which is FN10K or Redder Canyon card. Show hardware will show you some details about the about the NICs which are currently available. So this is FM10000. We have uh, Fort Will cards and we have two ports on the Niantic card. You can also see that in this output you can basically see the CPU socket for every card. So you can really know where the card is connected to which CPU socket. Show threads shows eight worker threads and one main thread, of course. And uh, now, basically, let's talk a bit about how the the interfaces are assigned to the to the different worker threads. In this case, uh, we are basically initially on the on the VPP start. We are doing the very simple round robin, round robin of of assignment of the different interfaces to different uh, worker threads. Uh, in case when you are using RSS, which is basically just another receive queue on the on the on the on the receive side, then the then uh, we will basically try to assign every every next queue to the next worker thread, and then we are doing that in the round robin. So nothing spectacular. It's basically just a circular assignment of, uh, and of course what we have is ability to uh, move uh, interface processing from one worker thread to another worker thread on the real time. So there is a command on, on the debug CLE which is, which is basically show DPDK interface placement, which shows you ex which thread is running, is processing which, which receive queue on which interface. And if, for example, if you want to move this this interface to the different to the different uh, thread, you can just do set DPDK interface placement. Q1 thread eight. Show DPDK interface. And now you can see that basically with this command, I moved, I moved this specific uh, queue on the uh, on 40 gig 84 slash 00 to to worker thread eight. So this is this this can be done in the runtime. So we actually don't need to shut down interface and bring bring up for doing this change. We can really move interface from, from one worker thread to another worker thread without single packet loss. And when it comes to, to the code side of this, uh, let me first start with uh, spinning up the new threads. So basically the multi-threading code is split to two different repositories. One part of it is in, is in vlib, so it's a vlib slash vlib slash threads.c. And this part is basically responsible for, for launching the new new threads and then making the cloning between the threads. Because when we are spinning up the new thread, we are basically clon cloning some data structures. And in some cases, we need to reclone the data structures. And then using this, let's say, thread infrastructure, which is available in the vlib slash vlib.c, uh, we basically, on the DPDK side, on the vnet, we are registering new worker threads. So, Another part of the code is inside the, the VNet. It's a VNet uh, devices, DPDK. Uh, DPDK. Thread.c. And if you take a look into this code, we basically, we have this this part of code, which is basically registering the new thread. And we are basically saying that IO thread main function is DPDK IO thread function. And same we are doing for worker thread. So basically you can use this infrastructure for spinning your own custom thread. 
And what we currently support is, as Dave, I think, already explained before, we can do either the standard Unix p threads or we can use DPDK EAL for, for packet processing threads and using the packet, uh, DPDK infrastructure. And the spinning up of the new thread is basically just uh, calling the same dispatch, uh, frame dispatch uh, functions which we are using in the, in the single threaded mode. So basically, we clone the data, data structures and then we are, and then we just spin up the new, new thread using these different uh, VLIB, VLIB main uh, data structures. So from, 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 the, from the end user side or from, from the side, if, from, if you are just doing the, the feature development on the, on the VPP and building the new feature uh, graph node, doing multi-threading is really zero touch. You don't need to do anything to, re to use the multi-threading infrastructure. And Um, what else I can show here? One thing um, we, we, we probably want to describe in some yep. detail is that uh, worker thread barrier check. One thing, uh -huh, is, yeah, 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 quick, correct, one, yeah. Yeah, let me let me do a couple of sentences on that. Yep. Inherently, the API message handlers start off saying they're MP unsafe. Before the um, command functions are executed, they'll end up causing a barrier sync so that the workers are shut down so you can mess with data structures without thinking about it. A certain number of them have been marked as MP safe. Uh, given that we ran on one core for the longest time, it's probably better to start off saying, eh, you know, here's some API message, just shut the worker threads down, do whatever, and then turn them back on. The barrier sync is just real, you know, is a real simple way of doing that. So, yeah, and uh, another thing which should we should explain a bit is basically uh, how do we deal with uh, cases when we have just a single queue in multi-thread. So when we have a multiple queues on the transmit side, it's quite easy. We are basically mapping one queue for every worker thread, and we are basically just filling the, the your own every worker thread is filling own queue on the on the transmit side. In case when we don't have the enough transmit queues. On, let's say if you are using some power virtualized interfaces or some older NICs, in that case we basically need to do a lock. So we have a spin lock which is basically activated only in case we, when we don't have enough uh, transmit queues. In that case we are falling back to the single queue setup and we, are, we need to lock the, the queue. So if worker thread one is writing to, the, to, the, to the, some specific transmit queue in that case, it will lock it and other queues will need to wait up to the moment uh, when the first one is complete with his operation on the queue. We have that situation today with, uh, with vhost uh, interfaces because, uh, vhost user, because uh, quite recently the multi-queue support is added to the, to the vhost. So today what we are doing is exactly that. We are lo locking and waiting to, for fir first thread to complete to be able to, to write packet out. Uh, Another important, I mean, I mean, another thing which I would like to show is basically how we are deal with uh, with uh, different queues and uh, different interfaces to different worker threads. Uh, so if you take a look into this DPDK input, it's basically the main function for DPDK input node, and this is the place where we are basically distributing the the different interfaces to the different uh, to different worker threads. Uh, basically, first thing we, we are doing, we are taking the CPU index, which is different on, on, on different worker threads. And based on this CPU index, we are picking up the different vector of device and queue, DPDK device and queue structure. So basically, we have just a simple structure. We have a device index and we have the queue. And for every single CPU, we, we are just creating a vector of interfaces which are basically assigned to that queue. So when we are polling every uh, worker thread running on CPU 1, we'll pick different vector than, vector than, than, than the same function running on the CPU 2. And based on this, we'll basically just poll different interfaces. So it's basically very simple. 
very simple uh, uh, VEC for each loop, which basically goes to the list of interfaces and pulls them. And moving one interface to another one is actually very simple. We are just taking the, removing the, the one entry from this vector and moving it to another, to another one. So it can be done without doing any, any changes on the, you don't need to shut down interface or anything else. We just move, change the, the, the vector uh, and move one element from one vector to another one. And on the next poll, it will basically use the, use the different, uh, uh, different worker thread will pull that inf interface. Any questions? On these different multi-threaded um, options, mm -hmm. do you have a paper that actually describes when you would use one option versus another, the characteristics of, I don't know, your traffic or application? Yeah, so it basically dep depends on the, on the workload. So in some cases, I mean, if you have some more complicated workload and you have a situation that one physical interface is is yeah. providing you enough input data to be distributed to the different worker threads. In that case, you, can, you should consider either using the RSS if it is available, or maybe in some cases you will not be happy because hashing RS, RSS hashing on, on, on the NIC is not, is not what you need. You want dif different distribution between the different uh, worker threads. In that case, you can use this IO thread model where you are basically doing software distribution of different flows to the different wor worker threads. But in most cases, with the modern NICs which are do able to do RSS, you will typically just want to, to run the worker threads and uh, use RSS to distribute uh, uh, packets between them. Some words to the wiki, <laughs> yeah. just to uh, y y y you know to you know to say the obvious thing. The wiki lags behind where the code base is, and we've recently gone through a big effort to um, how would you put it. I wouldn't say sanitize it, but rather to, to pack up the stuff that's relevant. It started off with a personal wiki of mine started five years ago. So it has all sorts of things from how to do vector processing to, you know, random philosophy to stuff you wouldn't dare put out in public. So the, um, uh, you know, wiki.ft.io probably, uh, you know, probably in some respects hasn't caught up, but that's where we're going to go to, to do what you're asking, Margaret. Because, I mean, clearly folks who want to, you know, want to use the stuff um, yeah, we can, I don't know, have people checked this out a little bit? Oh, has Damien paid his electric bill? <laughs> <laughs>